Psalm 39, 5 presents us with a sobering reminder. Life is fleeting, and all the things we so often strive for, status, wealth, and security, are like a vapor, disappearing as quickly as they come. David's words here challenge us to view our existence with humility, acknowledging that all of our lives are a mere hand breadth in the eyes of God. Our years are as nothing before Him. No matter how successful or secure we might feel, each of us is simply a breath. Even those who appear the most secure and powerful cannot escape the inevitability of mortality. In saying, you have made my days a mere hand breadth, the span of my years is as nothing before you, David contrasts the limited nature of human life with God's eternal existence. He reminds us that, in comparison to God's unchanging nature, our days are brief, like the width of a hand. When seen from God's perspective, life on earth is incredibly short. Although we may measure time in years and decades, David's imagery gives us a fresh perspective on the brevity of human life. We are here for just a moment. The idea that everyone is but a breath evokes the image of a vapor, a puff of air on a cold day that appears for a moment and then fades. This word, breath, reflects the Hebrew term hebel, which means vanity or emptiness. It is the same term used throughout Ecclesiastes to describe the transient and elusive nature of life. Like mist, life is weightless and easily dispersed. It holds no tangible substance that can be grasped. No matter how much we accomplish or accumulate, these achievements are as fragile and fleeting as a breath in the wind. This recognition can be unsettling. We are inclined to fill our lives with things that provide a sense of permanence and significance. Wealth, health, social status, these give us a sense of security, an illusion of control over our fate. Yet David's words remind us that this security is deceptive. Our lives are short and unpredictable. One moment we may feel secure in our health, our finances, our accomplishments, but the next moment, these things may vanish. Even the strongest or wealthiest individuals are subject to this same transience, even those who seem secure. David's insight extends to even those who seem secure. People who seem secure, those who possess wealth, influence, health, or social standing, often appear to be above the struggles and uncertainties that others face. They seem to live lives untouched by the common problems that beset others. They may feel that their resources make them safe from the risks and hardships of life. But David dispels this myth. Security rooted in worldly success is only an illusion, a temporary comfort that fails to withstand the truth of human frailty. No amount of wealth can shield a person from illness or prevent the aging of the body. No level of power can protect a person from the vulnerability of mortality. These individuals may project an image of strength and invulnerability, but beneath it, they are as susceptible to life's brevity as anyone else. There is no fortress of human power that can defy the passage of time. David reminds us that those who seem most in control of their lives are ultimately just as fragile as the rest of us. This truth is often forgotten in our culture, where we're encouraged to chase stability, security, and success. Many people invest their lives in building a foundation of wealth, influence, and achievements, believing that these will give them significance and protection. They view their lives as fortresses, constructed through hard work and determination. Yet, as David reminds us, the security offered by these pursuits is hollow. When confronted with the reality of mortality, the things we have accumulated lose their value. The wealth, status, and comforts that people pursue so relentlessly are fleeting. They cannot accompany us beyond this life. This perspective can be difficult to accept. We live in a world that often equates value with longevity, 
permanence, and accumulation. To acknowledge that our lives are like vapor challenges us to redefine our understanding of what truly matters. David's words confront us with a reality that may initially be uncomfortable, but they also offer a profound truth. Our lives are transient, and the things we often cherish are merely temporary. David's reflections lead us to an important realization. Since our earthly lives are short and insecure, it is unwise to put our hope in things that fade. Instead, we are encouraged to focus on what is eternal. If this life is but a vapor, then true significance lies not in what we acquire here, but in our relationship with God and our hope for the life to come. David's words urge us to shift our perspective away from earthly pursuits and toward a heavenly mindset. The ultimate purpose and fulfillment of our lives are not found in the fleeting achievements of this world, but in our relationship with God and the promise of eternal life with Him. There is no true happiness in this world. Psalm 1611, New International Version. You make known to me the path of life. You will find me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. A woman got married to the love of her life, and she was very happy. Everyone could see the happiness in her. She was finally getting married. This woman got so many gifts. Her and her husband had planned out where their honeymoon would be. After the wedding, they went on their honeymoon for a week. She was still very happy, a kind of happiness that anyone would pray for. The second week of her wedding, her husband had an accident and he didn't survive it. He died. Just two weeks of marriage and her happiness was gone. The woman couldn't believe it. The happiness turned into sorrow. That is what life brings to people. Today you are happy. Tomorrow you are crying. No one wants to cry, but this life is just that way. I remember reading a story of a man who bought a car for his son. The boy was very happy and couldn't thank his dad enough for the car. On the third day, he had an accident with the car and he passed on. This man blamed himself for what happened and couldn't get over the situation. He was once happy and now he is filled with sorrow, regrets, and pains. That is what life brings and that is what people are dying to have. Happiness today, tears tomorrow. I have not seen any happiness in this world that is everlasting. Even a marriage that is filled with love for 70 years ends with sorrow when one of them passes away. Nothing lasts forever in this world. I have not seen true happiness in this world. It is always temporary. I am not saying all of these to bring fear in us or to be afraid of finding happiness. The message that I want to deliver to us is that true happiness is not here on earth. I have searched the whole world and I have found nothing that can give true happiness. True happiness that lasts forever. We need to choose what gives happiness wisely. There is nothing on earth that will give true happiness. We need to be true to ourselves. We should stop deceiving ourselves with all the talks about money bringing true happiness. There are times in our lives that we have had a happy moment. We love the memory because they are precious to us. We have shared a happy moment with our loved ones. Maybe we traveled together. Maybe we went fishing together and created a great memory, but all of these things will fade. All of these things are not true happiness. They are limited to this world. They cannot help us in any way. I cannot lie to you. There is no happiness in this world that will last forever. I have said all of this to highlight that we as the body of Christ need to stop viewing heaven as the place we will go when we have finished having all the fun and happiness here on earth. My friend, heaven will be the best experience of your existence. Simply because you know your joy and your happiness is there and there forever. There will be no sorrow and no sickness some people are batting with one sickness or the other. 
They look happy on the outside, but deep inside, they are sad. You don't know what happens behind closed doors in someone's life. You have spoken to people in the last week that cried themselves to sleep, but you would never know it. I just want to point out the truth to you. People have been saying for a long time that money will give them happiness, but what money can do is limited when it comes to true happiness. David must have looked everywhere and couldn't get the true happiness. He must have looked everywhere, and he saw that there was no joy anywhere, and he concluded that joy is in the presence of God. The true happiness is in the presence of God, and there is no place you can get something like that. We cannot say that David said this because he was poor. David was not a poor man. He was rich. He could buy happiness with money. Or maybe he had even tried that and still couldn't find true happiness. Hence, he concluded only God can give true happiness.